watch my friends, my family, my children die in front of me. I've seen them. I've seen my friends tortured by these extremely brutal aliens. Now I don't know. I'm gonna suck alone in the bunker. I don't know if anyone else is out there. I could potentially be the last human uh, human on Earth. Now I have the chance to actually pay back and kill the predators that did this to me, that destroyed my life. This is why this house would press the button today. Let's first start with some definitions for this. We find this house as the potentially last person on Earth. We define her to be Jane, a previous mother of three children. Uh, so we see that this debate is actually going on within her head. So we see, you know, team proposition is, you know, the angel on the right side of the shoulder telling her to do the right thing, whereas team opposition is, you know, the devil on the shoulder telling her to do the wrong thing. Now we define the button to be the doomsday device. It could be anything. It could be a nuclear device that's spread all around the earth. Anything that sort of kills all life on Earth as we know it. Um, life we define to be, you know, humans, aliens, animals, all these things on Earth that will be destroyed by this button. The aliens we define them as, as the ones that we saw, you know, in the picture on the presentation. And we see that these aliens are very different from us. You know, they have very, uh, they're very different appearance. They probably have very different organs, organ system, and things like that. So what is our, what, are, what is our burden today? We believe that on our side of the house, we have to prove that as the last person on Earth, we have, first of all, a moral responsibility to press the button and do this, and second of all, that the general outcomes will be favorable. So we're going to be doing this in three arguments in the opening government today. First of all, I'll be talking about how, um, how Jane should be doing this because, it, it, because of the payback and the retribution that she could, she could get out of this. Second of all, I'll talk about how she has a moral responsibility to stop the aliens from conquering other planets. And, and my, uh, my, my, my other speaker will be talking about the third argument of how a new spike of life can occur. So let's get right into the first argument. Before I'll take your point. So we think that you already have been taking an actual body to actually do what Jane is actually supposed to do. Tell us why those very same bodies... No, because clearly, clearly we see that these aliens obviously had the ability to go on Earth and just completely destroy the planet without any repercussion. So we see that no, there's not really any way to do this. And as far as Jane knows, she should, she should take action into her own hands and do this. It's sort of like when you have, have self-defense, right? If someone breaks into your home, you should be allowed to actually shoot them in the head if they have killed your whole family already. We don't believe that you should wait for the police to come before the killer can you know, shoot you and move on to other neighborhoods. We believe you should take action right now. Wait, right, sir. Right? Uh, no, thank you. So now getting into the first argument on the payback and retribution. So in this we see uh, the general thesis of the argument is an eye for an eye. We believe that Jane should take action into her own hands and she should kill these aliens that have destroyed everything she lived for, right? These people, as I said, they destroyed everything that Jane has held very dearly. They, they killed her kids, they, they tortured her kids, they tortured her family, they tortured her friends. Very brutal. They shot her kids right in front of her. Now she has the chance to pay back this, right? Um, we see, you know, little Johnny, little Tim, they were all, we saw the torture in front of her eyes. You know, we see that Jane, when she goes, when she falls asleep, she can still see them crying in her, in her dreams. This is very sad. Jane is just thinking to herself, why could I not save my children? Why could I not save my husband? Why could I not save my kids? But now we see that you can finally pay back the people who actually did that, the aliens that came and destroyed my son. So we see no reason why she shouldn't be doing this. Furthermore, we see that it needs to be done actually now, before Jane actually loses her mind and goes insane. Because right now she's living completely alone in this bunker, you know. No one else to talk to, no one else. As far as she knows, she's the absolute last human on Earth. We see she needs, uh, she's already, you know, having this debate within her own head, asking for points of information to herself, <laughs> debating this. So see, you know, she's already very mentally unstable, and that's why it needs to be done right now, while she still has the capability to actually realize what she's going through, right? Um, we see that she's realized that she has no, no ability to actually save or rebuild the planet. It's been completely taken over by the aliens. She's all by herself. We see that Earth is lost anyways, but now new life, if we actually kill the aliens now, new life can be rebuilt, as my second speaker will be going on today. But we see that clearly she has very much an incentive to actually have payback on this. But now we're going to the second point on how she has a moral responsibility to stop the aliens. And the premise here is, as I said, that Jane can't actually do anything to rebuild her own life, but she can save other species from going through the same thing as her. So what do we know now from the premise of this thing? We know that these aliens are highly invasive. What does Jane actually know? She knows that these aliens are highly aggressive and very invasive. They just went to a bad planet without having any diplomatic effort. They went to Earth, they completely invaded them, they had no diplomatic contact at all before they came. All they did was just came in, they killed everybody, they started torturing people, and but so sir, on. Yes? We've seen it happen in Battleship, with the very same aliens in Battleship came with the very same reason. But they still conquered them. Tell us why we still can't do that in Jane's situation with these very same things like an actual plot. Because that's actually a TV show. We're talking about the real world here. Okay? That's 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 everything. That is why we that is why we stop them from conquering other things. So what, again, what can we conclude from what we know? We can conclude that these aliens are going to keep going on soon. You know, after they take our, our, our planet, destroy them. You know, they're going to move on. They're going to kill other species. 
Like they actually, we believe that they feed on the life form of humans and other aspects. You know, they're sort of like the Germans World War II. They just went on and conquered everything. They're like space Nazis, right? So we see that they will go to other planets after hours. We see that they have the technology to, first of all, track life, so they will be able to find other animals. Furthermore, we see that they, they are able to travel through space, so they probably have, you know, a warp drive or something like that. So they have a lot of very strong technology that can easily go to other planets and destroy them too. So I'm saying, you know, if we actually have the chance to stop them now, then we should be doing so. It's sort of like, again, if we relate to the Germany example, it was like after Germany invaded Poland, if we had the chance to stop them right then, we believe that we should have done that, right? So again, moving on to now, what Jane should, what Jane should actually do, you know? She knows, she knows what it was like to lose everyone. Jane has actually been through this very hard conflict, and she realized that this is said that she can't actually rebuild her own life. But what can she do? She can stop similar people or you know aliens from having to go through the same pain and horror that she has gone through, right? Um, we see that you know if someone if someone could have saved her from the pain, she yeah. probably would have been very happy to for, for them to have done it, right? So so so, so other uh, another planet before theirs that could have stopped these aliens, Jane would have been very happy if they'd done that. So she believes that she should have done the same. You know, similarly, if your child is shot before you, you can't actually stop that. You can't bring back your child. But at least you can find the killer and you can stop them from shooting other children, right? This is what we see. Now, in a typical situation, we have T-Proposition believe that, yeah, we could leave it up to a higher body. But since, as far as we know, there is no higher body that will be able to stop these aliens, there is no intergalactic <coughs> body that will be able to stop them, we believe that we should be doing this ourselves, right? As far as we know, this doesn't exist and we can't do anything to do. So we see that right now, as far as Jane is concerned, this is the only solution she has. This is what we also believe makes it morally acceptable to do this. Um, they did the same to us and they do it again to other planets. That is why we need to stop them now and that's why on Team Proposition, we beg you to put press the button. Okay, we thank the first speaker for that. Uh, and we'd like to call the first speaker of opening opposition. Here, here. Smith has taught me is that there's hope in every situation. He did it in Man in Black, I Am Legend, and, and After Earth, right? And we think they haven't told us why there isn't hope. All they have told us though is brainwash you and tell you that revenge is the way to success and revenge is the way of solving things. And we'll tell you from this side of the house that revenge should never the reason there should never be the reason why people make decisions. Because if that's the reason why you make a decision, it's then an irrational decision, therefore immoral because of the end outcome. Right? Our opening opposition will prove two things to you in today's debate. Well, firstly prove to you that it's immoral and unacceptable regardless of the mean, regardless of the ends. And lastly, we'll take the deontology approach where we don't use humans as a means to an end just because we're angry. And we don't use our rights and our self-interest to kill everyone else because we just angry that little Tim and little John was killed. We don't think that's a fair basis to determine how everybody else should live. But before anything else, let's go to this idea of rebuttal. And here the only reason why they told us that something is justified is because I'm angry. And here we tell you that people should never make decisions on the basis of I'm angry. Because it means, one, they're making decisions on a very emotional scale where they don't make a decision on a rational term. That in itself means the decision is not good, but even if it was good, it means in the process you're not making a good decision for yourself because it's based on emotion. Right? But secondly, we'll tell you even if you are angry, what's the problem in 
calming down and waiting to see what happens afterwards. They didn't necessarily tell us what the harm is in waiting and seeing if everyone else exists except for the fact that they're going to kill us and if we kill them first then we save everybody else. But the logic there is there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of galaxies out there and a lot of aliens. If you're going to kill one type of alien there are a lot more and if they are as vicious and as angry as you claim they are they will go to other planets and kill everybody else. We don't see yes. how killing this type of alien solves everybody's problems. But then they tell us that people are insane and she's going to go crazy. But here we tell you that they undermine humans' abilities to forget about certain things. We've seen soldiers do it when they go to war and they forget. We've seen survivors from the Nazi yeah. saga and the Holocaust that forget about what happened and that retribute regardless of whether or not they paid revenge. We've seen it with things like the TRC where even if your murderer is still alive, you don't kill them because two wrongs don't make a right. Right? No. But then we lastly tell you, right, that even if it was the last solution, it's not right and it's therefore not necessary. Right? Let's go to our first idea of how, right, uh, 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 this idea of deontology and the deontology approach, right? And here we tell you that the end of humanity should only be based as a last resort. And here we tell you if we can prove that, that there, are sources of last, uh, uh, there are sources of hope, then automatically it's not the last resort, right? So the first thing we tell you here is that if Jaina does decide to kill a person, it means she herself is a Madam. murderer. None taken. And we think being an active murderer is immorally incorrect because you justify the actions of that particular murderer who murdered your family. So here we tell you that certain individuals are high in power. And here we tell you that when government does, for example, a simple example in terms of reality, just because government has a terrorist that yeah. killed people, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean we should either one, accept the killing of that terrorist, or two, justify that okay. killing of a terrorist. And this is where we tell you that sometimes we just need to do things the right way, regardless of the means to an end. But secondly, we tell you that she's not making the right decision because of the immense pressure and the immense fear and the fact that she's in a situation that she herself can't control. But what's wrong with, with having not making a right decision? We tell you here that there was or could have been possibility that you could have survived the situation. So you allow her to commit suicide and murder everyone else with mis not taken, with misinformation. What does misinformation do? It externally harms everyone else. We saw it with the Nazis where they believed in um, in where they believed in pseudoscience that wasn't necessarily true. They made decisions that today scar human nature and they scar relations between certain religions. We think misinformation can make people make the wrong decision and in the short term harm everyone else. But then the new world that they talk about, Jane will always go down in history as the woman that murdered masses of people that could have survived. We think that is a burden on Jane as an individual, regardless of the fact that she's dead. But that is a burden on her. And we think that's when you use people as a means to an end and you don't consider their image after the process. Right? Now take it. But secondly, we tell you that even if this wasn't the case, so even if she did make an irrational decision, we don't justify murdering people because somebody else murdered you. Yes, we do it in cases of self-defense because you are going to be murdered. But they haven't, been, they haven't proven that you are going to be murdered in this scenario. So we don't think this is a scenario of, uh, of self-defense because they haven't shown us that the individual that is holding the gun is bound to kill you. But let's tell you why it wouldn't happen. Right? We tell you that regardless of people's race, physical appearance, nationality, or university, uh, universality, right? We can make ah. peace and we can communicate. We saw this happen in Avatar, where people meet in common ground regardless of their races, regardless of their appearance, regardless of where they came from, people can still come to common oh, ground and talk. But let's tell you why Jane has the superior part of talking. Because humans are the most important and most powerful species. I would think regardless of the fact that they killed a lot of other types of humans, the fact that she has resources in, the, in, the, in this laboratory, and this is secret, um, in, this, in this secret, can I take you please quickly? Can I take you? No, thank you. No, no, thank you. Okay, so the fact that she's stuck in a room with resources, we think she's capable of fighting these individuals, if not fighting, to have leverage with them and show them that she is as powerful. And with that, we think there can be some sort of negotiations. We saw this happen in the Cold War, where Russia had resources, nuclear weapons, America had resources, and always forced them to sit down and talk and not shoot each other down. So we think because of human interest and the fact that all aliens want to survive, they don't want to die.
die. They will come to the uh, negotiating table and they will come talk because of the, so, the sense of resources that are distributed between these two individuals. So we've told you that one, even if assuming that she did have to do this, it's not okay to make her an active murderer. But two, even if she did want to become an active murderer, it's not a rational decision. So why should we value it? Three, if there is hope and organizations such as the intergalactic organization and things like resources where she can have leverage and negotiate, we need to know why she shouldn't do it. But lastly, the new world shouldn't view Jane as the woman that went down the lane, who killed people because her image does matter regardless of the fact that she's six foot underground. Or more than six feet. I'm six foot seven. <laughs> we thank the speaker for speaking about the pod. No, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Sometimes there is no hope. But this is not even this situation, because I will outline this inside my substance. There is hope, only a different kind of hope. A hope that requires your own sacrifice, a hope that is morally extremely justified. However, I'll go on to this later. First, I'll tackle some of the points that were brought up. Firstly, the idea of can you actually use your anger for good, and can it be a rational decision, even though. First, I'd like to point out that we as Jane are human. We have this insane power of eye for an eye. If your uh, children were killed, we can see this in Jane in The Mentalist, that you want to have retribution. You want to have, as a human, as Jane, this is a very normal thing to do. But even then, even if this would not be that the angry would not be irrational, we already gave you a reason why we should still do this. Because from the information we know, we know that they are space Nazis, and they have done extremely horrifying things to humans. They have never negotiated before. They just came onto your planet and killed every single one of you, except for Jay. So what we see is that, no, there is this idea of angriness, but this angriness makes a lot of sense. Point, and you're, no, sir, you're being immoral if you are not killing the aliens, otherwise they would invade other species and they would do the exact same thing. They even line this out, but yes, there are other species. Well, it doesn't matter if there's others in the universe, it's about this one that's attacking. And if you would do this, you would save a lot of people the prey that you have suffered. Then there's the whole idea that you are immoral if you are killing these people, or these aliens. Firstly, we rely on that they're different, and they say that humans are the most important race, we see so too. We say that the aliens are less important than us, and they've killed us by the millions. So, we see that yes, we are more important, and they have done us very, very, no thank you ma'am, very wrong. These are not just terrorists, these have tried to kill the entire human race. This is another level, of situation. this is another situation. This is everyone has to die by their code. If you not kill those people with immense power to destroy everyone, which you have done before, this is not battleship. We do not have a lot of humans alive or battleships that can target these aliens. No, battleships are gone. There's nothing known. Thank you, man. There's nothing there. They have took it, taken everything. And we saw on other monitors that they are taking over the entirety of the world. So yes, they have the power to take over everything, and they're settling and everything. No, thank you, man. So yes, there is this idea that they they have this power to take everything. This is not battleship. They we have lost at this point, except for one last thing. We have one last thing, which is the button, which is used to save others. And if you are not taking this button, if you are not taking this own misperal responsibility, you are not being fair. They take all this idea that we will go crazy, tell this very fast, no thank you, man. We'll definitely go crazy. We always see this in, we see this in Castaway, we see this in, when we put a human in a chamber with nothing else, they eventually go crazy. They start talking to inanimate human things. This is just making us human. And we as Jane know this. So. This is a very human thing. We are human, and that's how we have to act. And so, idea of misinformation, no thank you, ma'am. There is no misinformation here. We have seen angry, angry aliens taking over the entirety of the world, and we've seen them destroy everyone. This is not a piece of misinformation. This is not a situation where we can say, oh, mass murder of this alien species is morally wrong. No, we've seen these species, aliens, that have the power to take over an entire race, an entire world, 
these are not just terrorists. These are people we can actually actively stop at this moment. And you are immoral if you're not doing that, if you're not taking a step. Okay, last I'll take a step down at this point of negotiation. Well, there's no negotiation because there are very different species. The possibility of them speaking English is very very, 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 very low. There is no idea. No, thank you, man. There is no idea of how we can actually communicate with them. Also, they've never tried to negotiate in the first place. So why would they do now? You would have to explain that somehow you can kill them all. I don't think they'll take you very seriously. I don't think they'll give you any negotiation power. It's the last human alive. You have no negotiation power because you can't communicate, because you can't explain. You can all kill them. Okay. So. Then the idea of the Cold War, the Cold War doesn't count here because nothing happened in the Cold War, that's why it's a Cold War. Everything has already happened. You, as a species, have died. No, thank you. Okay, so now on to my point, which is that there can be a new spark of life. Okay. So, we, so you say you want retribution for Jaina, but the best thing about retribution is only it only happens if you're alive to see it. If she's going to kill us out, then that's not true retribution. Mm. No, that's not entirely true. We see suicide bombers, we see a lot of people doing things that they have control over. This, this also goes to the idea of uh, this image idea that they bring up. There is no image if you kill everyone. No one will know if you have been alive, if you have taken a moral and you have taken this responsibility. This is a heavy burden, but you are the better person here because you have saved other species and you bring this spark of hope. Okay, so what can happen in this uh, Earth if nuclear explosions kill all uh, life? We can see that there can be new life. We've seen this in our planet in the first of all because we were molten, hot, block of lava, and suddenly lives part out of this. This could happen very well again. It's called primary secession. It happens on volcanic islands. We can see this happening. We see uh, we see that the world still has potential. And even more now, because we still have no thank you. We still have organic matter left in the world. We have already lived. This is not just a block of lava. Things have lived on this planet. And this gives us a very great potential to build it up from the very beginning of evolution. So yes, there is a spark of life. And Jane will never be allowed to see it, but she has taken this moral responsibility. She has been moral and said, I'm going to allow this to happen. Yeah. So, why wouldn't this happen if we don't do it right now? This is what I'm planning. So what do we know about these alien species? They take over planets. They look extremely different from us. So what do they have to do? What's the first thing? They have to make our planet look exactly like their planet, otherwise they won't be able to survive. They've taken over at the moment. You don't know if there's anyone else. It doesn't matter. But they don't maybe have no source of food. You don't know if it's there. And they have to rebuild the same situation for them to actually actively live. So, what will happen to our planet under their rule? We'll see that it will change. It will change for the worse, and for the worse of the chance of our human species being alive again. Okay, go ahead. So, you've proven that Jane is alive, but what stops uh, other people from being alive if an unfit lady with two children could survive? Well, she came under this bunker. Because her husband used to be in the CIA, <laughs> her husband was killed, and she brought her down to this one vast bunker, and she's still alive. Other people do not have the possibility to kill these humans, because we, as an entirety of the human race, were not capable of doing this. We were not able to stop them. Why would five humans be able to do this? This is not as an independence day. This is our final chance. Okay, so, human uh, aliens would be changing the planet for the better, right? They would be changing the planet so they can actually live on it. What would happen then? Well, we're taking away this new spark of life that still is there. This sparkle of hope is still there at the moment because the innovation has just happened. However, as long as we wait, so just take over our planet bit by bit until it's not the same planet anymore, and these chances are not there anymore. It will be completely different. We've seen this in Transformers, but Transformers have to change the Septicons. We've seen this in Superman, where the alien species had to change the gravity of the Planet. We see that they have very strange technology and they have the possibility to do this. So why wouldn't they? Of course they would. If you want this new spark of life to be there, we need to press that button. Thank you. Okay, we thank the speaker for the speech and we'd like to call up the second speaker of opening opposition. Here you go.
So ladies and gentlemen, well, what Sad Proposition practically did in today's book was that they based most of their analysis on only the secret agency in America. So now the question we ask ourselves is how many secret agencies do we actually have in the world? And because of that, we think that the automatic or rather natural conclusion of the point is that we practically have a potential of a lot of wives whose husbands work in the secret agency who could still conquer the world in We've seen it happen in the battle of this engagement. And because their case was based on an assumption, we think that all of that proves the, proves the very same fact that it is actually possible for these very same wives, global ACGism, to still conquer these aliens, right? But more than that, ACGism, I have four points and I, I'm rebuttal, right? So uh, the first point is this whole idea of how, of how um, Jane, or rather all of these wives, or actually on how Jane is going to gain retribution at the end when she presses this button. So let's just we tell them, um, and they, well, they practically gave us the example of suicide bombers, and that when they kill themselves, well, it's a benefit because, well, they get the benefit of the fact that I did it at the end of the day. Well, let's just we think that this is false. We think that retribution in today's debate is when you kill someone or you make someone suffer to see them suffer. We think that that's the benefit and that's the aim of retribution within itself. But on the second level, they tell us about communication, tells the fact that we don't think that we can actually come to a common ground of agreement with these very same people because while we cannot communicate with aliens. This is false, ladies and gentlemen, and this is simply because they ignore the fact that we have intercontinental bodies out there. That's exactly what they stand for. We've seen it happen in Men in Black, where they actually teach aliens to live as humans, and then they actually learn alien ways as well as languages themselves. Yeah. We've seen it happen on Earth, ladies and gentlemen, with plunges from Ben 10. We think, that these are we think that these are bodies who are practically yeah. there to do this very same job and to ensure all of this, and to actually ensure communication with these very same aliens, to yeah. avoid all of these issues whereby they'll uh, whereby aliens are actually trying to wipe out the human race, right? But let's just spend on the third um on the third level, well they practically um they practically tell us that well our plan um they, oh so on the third level is they tell us that well um based on the uh, they tell us that well because these aliens have actually greater power if Jaden comes with military forces assuming that she did have some well then at the end of the day we think that she's not going to survive because she's the only person and then, well they also gave us the example which is quite contradictory of the fact that with the call um, uh, of the Cold War right we tell that Ace and Jasmine, one the reason why um we tell that Ace and Jasmine, that the, the reason why people, the reason why um, America and Russia didn't actually have um, actual or other physical war within the Cold War was because these both two bodies had power, had equal power. So this is exactly what we tell you. We tell that with all of the military or other arms available for yeah. Jane, as well as existent from, uh, as well as existent that Jane can actually receive from these very intellectual bodies, we tell that she has, she has, she has a lot of chances of having just about the equal power. So what does this then mean in the scenario of the Cold War? And this is when I, and this is when I show you why the Clinton's example is actually relevant. We thought that when those two bodies then therefore have equal power at the end of the day, we think that it deters these very same aliens from then having war or trying to actually wipe up the whole human race. And because of that, we do think that this engagement it is still wrong to wipe up human race or to or to press this button this engagement or to rather end life on, on Earth on the basis of hope, like Montana said. And because of that, this engagement, I then move on to my um, I then move on into my data, right? So. Yes, sir. Please walk me through how 200 wives on Earth is going to kill a species that wiped the whole of Earth, 7 billion people. How do they do this? Because they're in secret agencies and already they're surrounded by a lot of military around them, right? And a lot of ops. But more than that, because like we said, there's intergalactical bodies that regulate things that come into Earth. So already these people are away and they are going to intervene into the situation. Okay. So yes, we tell you that there is a better outcome instead of what you yeah. just gave us. Sit down, sir. This is exactly why I show side government the tangible harms of the, um, of their policy, right? So what we tell you under this lesson just mean, I'll, I'll practically show you how they fail to protect life and create a future generation on earth as they want us to believe in today's debate. So my, fir um, so my first speaker practically showed you why it's actually unfair to end life on earth on the basis of hope, and I'm going to show you why their stance or rather their policy doesn't have any utility approach in today's debate. Right? So firstly, ladies and gentlemen, we look at the inefficacy of their policy. So we tell that their policy practically aims to protect life on Earth, right? But firstly, we tell that, ladies and gentlemen, it's assumed that firstly that person is the only person on Earth, which practically kills the idea that they, that, that person has the moral obligation to protect Earth as a whole just because they don't have anything to lose at the end of the day. We think that when that person then kills or when that person presses the button, we think that, ladies and gentlemen, it, it actually kills for 
takes in life and earth if they kill the very same people that they themselves are, that they themselves are not even taking into account? Because like we said, it's assumed that 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 Jane, Jaina, Jane, whoever she is, is the only person that's treating that people, right? Yeah. But on the second level, and uh, but on the second response, yes, it's me. We tell um, we need to ask ourselves this question. Why do we actually believe that there's still life on Earth on top of that lesson just me? We tell that one, because like Jaina did survive this and just me, we think that a lot 200 more women out there today in the world can still survive. Why should Jane, why should Jane not consider the lives of the women? But more than that, we tell that with the nature of aliens, when they come to Earth, they practically aim to take humans as hostage and they don't necessarily come with their aim to kill. We've seen it with Bill Gax and Dead okay. All he does with all of these aliens and humans from other countries is that he takes them for hostage to get some resource that he actually what from that very same person, right? But, not, but more than that, isn't just me. Let's just look at how they themselves contradict the basis of protecting the rights of life and today's debate, right? So, firstly, we're talking the soup benefit from their policy is that, well, if we, if Jaina presses this button, then already she protects the future generation of Earth that's going to come. If she kills everyone within Earth, firstly, what's the future generation that's going to come with that? And even if they did come, what Earth are they going to live under if they're still going to um, care, if they're still going to destroy the whole Earth at the end of the day? But more than that, we tell that they still don't protect life. Why? Because they don't create a deterrence for these aliens to stop coming to Earth, ladies and gentlemen. Like we told you, it's, it was effective with the Cold War when people had equal power. We told you, like in Battleship, ladies and gentlemen, they had military um, arms and all of those things from the Navy. Why can't they have them now? Why can't they still have those um, all of those um, even now? So we tell that with their stars, or rather their policy, they don't deter these aliens from, um, from coming back to Earth, right? So others, um, they don't deter these aliens from coming back to Earth. From coming back to Earth, right? So we tell them it's just when, when they actually implement their policy, we look at it only incentivizes them. When they actually when they implement their policy, it only incentivizes them to continue the very same acts. Because what if you're gonna bomb Earth, what stops me from going to another planet? So if you kill this planet, that's what incentivizes them to go to other planets and create um, and, and, and further um, and, fur, um, and further all of those um, all of those actions, right? But more than that, is just when, we tell them it undermines country, it undermines um, countries' ability with this status quo, and that's where the um, that's that's why we should um, analyze the, the example of battleship. Well, then what happened was it forced people to come together and create allies to actually fight against these very same allies. What do we like about this? We tell that it creates um, allies within um, within society, but more than that, it brings countries together and it allows for countries to exhaust the, uh, their capabilities and resources. And because of this, ladies and gentlemen, let them force people. <laughs> I would like to speak for a speech and like to call the first speaker of closing government here, here. Thank you, ma'am. So, what 
I'm, to, I'm going to do in my speech is I'm going to show you what will happen in the case that humanity kind of restores and how this relationship is bad firstly for the master and secondly for the slave and why we should just take this opportunity and destroy the life as it is. Now what we see happening here is that even in the case that, 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 that with the information that Jane has at this particular moment, we see that Jane, no, thank you, Jane is incapable of knowing whether there are some, some other forces in the universe or not. Jane, ha Jane has to act on the information that she has at hand. But we also see that if Jane is to make a rational decision, she has to consider the possibility, no thank you, that she's not just the only human on Earth, on Earth that there is at least one other human person on Earth, and that they can regenerate the human race. But we see that in the past, the, when a nation is enslaved, or when an, an, an ethnic group is, group is enslaved, the path to freedom again is long, exhausting, and possibly never end. And let me go through examples that happened on this earth, right, no, thank you, and show you how this is possible. We see that in the case of the Inca Empire, this was actually the greatest empire. None of the empires in the West, no, thank you, was as big as it was. And here we see this, the analogy of these aliens being the Western people who invaded the Northern and Southern America in the 15th century, okay? We see that the Inca Empire was reduced to just a couple of people that struggled for centuries to keep their native language, to keep any hint of their own culture, no, thank you. They struggled even to keep themselves alive and their families alive. They never reached economic independence. They were never integrated to society. They never had same economic opportunities. They, have, they, they were never regarded as equal and never respected by the Western society that enslaved them. And we see that this is not uh, a dignified life for a, for a great nation or, or a great uh, group of people to live on. We see that, for example, we see that, no, thank you. We see that no nation as such has actually recovered from such enslavement and colonialism. Because we see that the only way that this could work out if those aliens are so much stronger than humans in this case would be that humans would be enslaved by those aliens. Okay. We see that Haiti, no thank you, was once the richest country in its region. But right now, no thank you, it's struggling. It has a failing government. The people have not had stable or economic progress in decades. And we see that because of that, no thank you, once a country is colonialized, it will never recover. We see this in the example of Native Americans that were pushed to the reservations. We see that, no thank you, they're still living in the reservations. They're still incapable of participating in the, in the community otherwise. We see that this in the example of Roma people in Europe. They are, that they are humiliated every day once and again. They're called dirty. They're not regarded as equally de developed human beings as the white people in Europe. And we see that because of that, we see that if somebody has enslaved you, you're not going to, they're not going to ever regard you as equal. No matter how hard you try, no matter how hard they think, that they are actually doing something to rec for recognition of your human rights. We've seen in numerous examples that if somebody has once enslaved you, if somebody has once done that to you, that you will never be able to convince them that you are of the same worth as they are. And because of that, we believe that this is a bad future for the human race. Assuming that you do allow Jane to kill people, we tell you that history always comes back to haunt us. People that are related and similar to Jane will always be ostracized because of what Jane did. How does, how does that prevent slavery? And ostracization of people in your world. We believe that it will actually destroy all life on Earth. So when the life on Earth will start again, they will have no memory of how this has happened. No, thank you. We believe that because of that, this creates the opportunity for a new start for the first time, for the first time in human history, history without this feeling of white guilt. No, thank you. Now let's talk about why such domination relationship is bad for the master. We've seen that in the culture of master-slave, we've seen this culture of master-slave power relations in the Western society, okay? And we see that this, this feeling of superiority kind of translates into all the decisions and all the world order that actually human beings created. No, thank you. First of all, we see this translated into the way that we treat, like, creatures that we consider as lesser creatures, so let's say animals, okay? We see that this translates into how we treat them, how we actually find pleasure in killing them or torturing them, such as, uh, no thank you, such as uh, like using bullfighting and things like this. We eat them, okay? We actually derive pleasure and happiness from suffering that we inflict on other human beings, and this is because we feel ourselves superior in us. No, thank you, second of all. Second of all, we believe that this actually creates this capitalist mentality, the rhetoric of freedom and responsibility, in which people are regarded as less worthy if they're not capable of empowering themselves or improving their situation. We see that this leads to the overvalue of individual success, which leads to neocolonialism, like we see in specials. We see that this leads to exhaustion of natural resources, to the destruction of natural resources or the earth as such. And we see that because all of this has happened because we have 
gained this um, this feeling of superiority, of false superiority, because we were able to dominate one race. Okay, and we believe that this is something that will also happen to the aliens. We see that the masters, the Western masters, as well as the alien masters, they are devoid of empathy. They are happy. They are never happy because they value happiness in the wrong way. They're always insecure because they're afraid that somebody will take their power away. And if there are some of them that are able to see through all of this, they are just crushed by the feeling of white guilt. And because of this, we believe that this is the opportunity to know us art to save the humanity from this never-ending future of colonialism. And we believe that the human race should take it. For a speech, and would like to call up the first speaker for closing opposition. Here, here. In my speech, I will be covering a couple of the most important uh, points that have come up in this debate. Before I will go on to my extension, a few points about how this is very morally and ethically wrong for Jane to do this. So, just a few contentions at first. Um, what we heard from the extension right now was that there is a huge need to stop colonialism in the universe. But I don't really see how killing the entire race of aliens coming onto the earth will stop this colonialism. Why? Because now that the aliens have proved that they can travel through the universe so quickly, through warps and etc., this also means that information of things such as retaliations by the humans, uh, repercussions and etc., also travel through space in the same way. And what does this do? When the information reaches the aliens on the other side, when the information reaches all around the space, this will only fuel the amount of repercussion and this will only fuel the ideology of colonialism and aggression. So no. And they have the example of, uh, the, of the Incas and how they were taken over, but had they started retaliating, had they been successful to go against the Spaniards that came in, the Spaniards would have come back with more repercussions and as a whole the world would have learned a new culture of colonialism and a new culture of colonial war. So we say that when you're so under, retaliation is actually for the worst of the, of the universe. And then finally they said that humans are a minority on earth and they will be exploited by the dominator which the aliens are now coming back and that is very bad. Now I say this is a very morally unjustified point to take because us humans now living on earth, we are the dominators here on earth and we can say that we do exploit the animals all around, we keep them as our own pets, we keep them as our own food in stocks and then we go and eat them, we slaughter them and we have them only for ourselves. So why are we then justified when there suddenly comes someone who is stronger than us, who is more capable than us and higher than us on the food chain? So what right do we have then to go against and retaliate against them? This is hypocrisy and this is morally and ethically wrong. Well, sir, and this is how we finally stop being the uh, hypocrites that we have been for centuries and decades and thousands of years. Oh, wait, this wait. is where I don't, wait, stop, stop, stop. I don't really see how when we've been the dominators and been dominating and exploiting everyone below us in the food chain, when there suddenly comes up someone from the higher up in the food chain and we do not accept it how we are the most more accepting one. No thank you. So now moving on to my substantive and I have nine points for why Jane should not do this and why it is ethically wrong and morally wrong for her. Moving on to my first point. Um, if you want to kill someone and if you want to retaliate yourself there must be for it to be morally correct, there must be an inherent benefit for yourself and an interest involved on your side. Now, when Jane is the only human left on Earth, and when she thinks and knows that she's the only human left on Earth, where is the benefit of her when she when she wipes an entire alien race from the Earth? There is no interest involved because she sees this as a dead end and she walks right into the wall in the dead end. There is no interest in this, there is no benefit in, in this. And when there is no benefit or interest in such a decision in killing other people, it is always ethically and morally wrong. We go to my second point, that Jane is essentially taking on the account of making an irreversible decision that will never be able to account for the repercussions or the consequences or ramifications even it might have. So when Jane presses that button, whatever happens afterwards will always be reversible. She does not, she does not know what effects this will have, be they good or bad. But
but there are still big harms that they will be bad. There are still harms that that the, that 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 you will have killed other wildlife. There will, will still be a harm that other aliens will come in as retaliation, and she will be uh, she, she will have taken an irreversible uh, action towards this. And if you sure. do not know that something like genocide will succeed, if you do not have the security that it will succeed, an irreversible decision like that is always immoral and ethically wrong. Moving to my third point, that when you, uh, Jane knows that she's the sure. only human on life, but as both sides have already contested, there is no reason for why any other type of life on Earth may not be living in symbiosis with the aliens coming in. Why, uh, be they bugs, be they plants, be they anything else, when Jane presses that button, she wipes and relinquishes all potential life for on the on 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 earth, not only that of human race. So she takes onto her own fingers, into her own hands, the account of all life and all potential to life on earth. And she wipes she wipes away the complete phenomenon of evolution and how evolution can help these uh, these potentials of life into developing into something better, into something like us humans, into climbing up the food chain. When she no thank you, when she presses that button, she directly terminates all potential for other life, and that is always physically and more than you go. My partner how evolution could occur again because we still have the potential for life after this. Tell me yes. how this is so bad. This is very bad because when you press that button, you ch you move the clock of Earth back 4.5 billion years. If you don't press that button, all the life that is living in symbiosis with the aliens will not have to start all over again. It might, it will be able to continue developing and evolving through symbiosis with the aliens. So what right do you have as a human being to just swipe away all of evolution down 4.5 billion years ago if you can keep it right now where it is and allow it to evolve with the aliens uh, uh, around? This is just undermining the linchpin of your argument and it's even more morally unjustified to just swipe away 4.5 billion years of aliens on Earth. Going to my f fourth point, that when you essentially when you press that button, you are taking Earth for your own commodity. You are taking the planet for being yours. Why is this wrong? Because this is hypocrisy. When we humans explore the Earth, we go onto the moon, we build stations there, we build space stations all over the Earth, and we go and put robots on Mars. There, and therefore, why is this not correct for any alien to do the same? Hypocrisy is in this case, and hypocrisy is never morally justified, and is always ethically wrong. Sir. Moving on to my fifth point, no thank you. Considering that this Jane is a non-believer and doesn't see that killing other people will have repercussions in her in her religion, she's essentially halting all uh, development and open accessibility she has been standing for as a non-believing human. And when she does this, it is also an unethical because it is hypocrisy of taking away benefits from someone stronger that is uh, evolving. My sixth point is that she will. Um, she will exacerbate the aggression in the universe as I was talking, so I don't need to cover it again. And then my final, my, I skipped the seventh point because it isn't very important. And on my eighth point, my final point is that, um, is that when you are terminating all, you are terminating all possibilities of life forms on Earth for working together. When a, when it, when organisms in the same habitat are attacked by an extraterrestrial. Uh, entity, they have it much easier for them to work together. Who knows if 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 any other humans or any other animals suddenly started working together and living in symbiosis with the aliens, or actually contact, contracting and going against them? When Jane presses that button, she undermines all the scientific research behind the fact that organisms in a habitat can live, can work together and fight against an extraterrestrial enemy that has come into their nest and destroyed their nest. We see that as a whole by pressing the button. Jane will undermine all of science and she will be ethically and morally wrong and must not do that. Well, we thank you for your speech and we'd like to call up the last member of the government bench. Here, here. Thus, the rational, rational action that we have to take. Secondly, 
live free or die trying should be the motto here because existence without dignity is not worth living. And lastly, so what is the moral imperative of this uh, situation? What is the right thing to do? But before I go into those things, let me give you a couple of quick, po quick points of rebuttal. Now, the major point of his, uh, of the second uh, here, uh, opposition's uh, bench was that through our actions, we would be even more hypocritical than we, uh, than, like, we would be hypocrites, to, be, uh, to put it simply. But what we explain to you, uh, especially in the uh, extension of the government, is that this is how we stop the cycle of hypocrisy. Of, this is how we stop this master and slave mentality from perpetuating. And we do it not only on our own planet, but we do it throughout the universe. So how our actions reverberate? They will reverberate throughout history and throughout the universe as being just actions, as us finally being able to transcend this master and slave morality and finally realizing that all sentient beings have the right to live free, as the great Optimus Prime always says. Yes, <laughs> now, the rest, of the, the rest of the rebuttal will be interwoven through the points of the value of existence and basically how the genocide will see, uh, yeah, through the value of existence. Now, the first point, what information is there and what is the rational belief to hold here? Now, the information that we have now is that the aliens are really, really bad guys in this case, right? So, we know that they're massive assholes, they have destroyed life as we know it, the humanity as we know it, probably a couple of other species as well, so it's very unlikely for them to really like, enjoy the symbiosis in this case, unless we kind of reduce this debate to talking about whether uh, amoebas will be able to coexist with aliens, which we don't really think is the crux of this debate. So, because the aliens have destroyed the vast majority of human life, as far as we know, as far as Jane knows, they have shown this massive disregard for life in general, for freedom in general, and diplomacy in general. This is some, what their actions have shown us that their nature is. And because of these, their Please previous shout. activities, no well, thank you madam, we find that the hope that the first kind of opposition brings us here, of impossible diplomacy, yada yada yada, is more irrational than acting uh, on actual evidence that we currently have, that we're the only person alive, that there's nothing else oh, uh, on the planet left. Because we do not have any other evidence of human activity. And because their entire case was predicated on us having like this massive amount of, I don't know, military, super, uh, military power of other galaxies coming to our aid, blah, blah, blah. This is information that we would have had in this case. And because we do not have it, we find that their kind of plea for diplomacy in this case does not really have any rational grounds. Do you disagree now? Assuming that opposition agrees that humanity should come to an end, you still haven't given us any analysis as to why Jane, out of all these 300 other wives that had husband that worked in the CIA, should be the actor that ends life. Why should she be a Okay, thank you very much. Because of the simple fact that she is standing right now before the button that can end all life. Other wives have unfortunately not had the same privilege uh, to act in this moral way. <laughs> Secondly, live free or die trying. Because we find today on the side of the government that there are specific conditionalities to existence. So what we're seeing is that not all life is equal, right? There are certain lives that are worth living and there are certain lives that are not that worth living. So there are certain existences that are worth uh, that are worse than existing at all in terms of uh, the moral kind of algebra that we're doing here. So what we're saying today and what has been uh, kind of uh, illuminated throughout our extension is that um, regenerated humanity under conditions of slavery, which is something that would be most likely because of the actions of this alien race, if they left us alive at all, right, is worse than no humanity at all. Because once colonialized, no thank you madams, because once masked, once colonialized, our human civilizations have never ever been able to recover in terms of, I don't know, economic progress, in terms of culture, in terms of undignified existence. No, thank you. And because as a deeply moral species, as what we human beings are, dignity, we find, is crucial for the identity and thus the existence of humanity as we know it. And because this will give us a chance, at least a chance, ladies and gentlemen, for a fresh start for Earth, 
for the universe because it will prevent the moral what collapse is? of the aliens, other aliens as well because we will show this moral transcendence of the master and slave mentality. This, give, this will give us a possibility for a truly dignified existence, not for only for all of humanity if it reemerges, but for other species in the universe as well. And lastly, so what is the moral imperative in this case? What is the right thing to do? No, thank you, madam. What we are doing here is pursuing the last act, the last possible act, given the information that we have, of truly free human will. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're doing here is finally evolving our morality, transcending our anthropocentrism, transcending the master-slave mentality, and kind of aim our actions towards other species, other alien races as well. We are finally then, and most importantly, protecting the dignity and thus all and any value of our existence. Now how will this reverberate throughout the ages? is something that they've asked. How will this reverberate throughout the galaxy? I think this will reverberate as Jane being a courageous human being, as a selfless human being, and as a good species. And this is how we want to go down throughout history, throughout our universe. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to push the button. Thank you very much. I speak for speech and like to call up the last speaker of this debate. Here, here. So before I go into some final rebuttal and summarizing this debate as a whole, I would just like to remind you of all my extensions that weren't rebutted. They only rebutted the stance of hypocrisy, but these were only two of my eight points. I also talked about how there's more, it is morally incorrect to go against and killing other people when you don't have a benefit, to making an action of killing others when it's irreversible, when, to killing all pot potential on life, and finally commodizing somehow the earth as a planet for yourself and only acting in your self-interest does. So now, moving on to some final rebuttal. Now, their point was that because of the, from both sides of this bench, down this bench, was that because of the information we have, this became clear at the end, but from the beginning it was also because of the information we have, retaliation is okay in a way. But I say that retaliation is not okay. Um, as they portray this, the aliens came down on Earth and had a fight with the humans. We humans clearly lost this fight. And Every, and thus it is essential that it is every species job on its own planet to protect its own planet. That is why we go in war with, with, against the aliens and this is why we accepted this fight as well. So why should we then use a superstitious means of getting rid of these aliens, of getting rid of these uh, uh, infiltrators? We say that this is, uh, this is tantamount to bad losing. And this is morally wrong as I proved through my extension, but also it will have universal repercussions. Okay, go ahead. The UN has set up rules that there is actually protected aliens. One of those is that we first of all do not attack them in the way for their approach. And they were the attackers in the first place. Okay, but we did attack them anyways. We defended our planet. And even if that is true, if we are, <laughs> if, we are <laughs> if we are defending our own planet, it shows that we have, we see our planet and we we want to have we want to go in a fight and contest them. And when we lose that fight, there is it is morally wrong to be a bad loser and use a moral and superstitious means of going against them. It's just morally wrong. And then they talked about how we, we they had a point about how we would be s uh, serving more aliens in the future. And now that. I also I, I, tell, I say to them that since the aliens have warp drives and they are so overpowered, they probably live and 
live and have some other aliens somewhere else and probably ha have some interaction with them. So they will only become more angry and have more repercussions and be attacking more, more uh, aliens all around. And this will only foster the culture of aggressive colonialism at, around the world. Now from the beginning it was clear that what they wanted was to pay back for what Jamie and Tim, the, 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 the children of Jane, were, were cutting through. But if they already are dead and if they do not have any potential to come back to life, to swipe away such a great, such a great race from others with these small grounds and my extension going against it, there is no potential and there is no way you're getting back to life of little Timmy and Jenny. There is no life you're paying back to them. You're just acting as a morally incorrect and unjust available human being. And then, then yeah. And then continuing, uh, lastly, that about the message they were sending, they think that they will send this philanthropic message and that we humans will look like heroes. But I say no, that is not true. This is always what happens when there is a stronger actor that beats a weaker actor. The stronger actor is always the one that gets to send the message around. So even if the weaker actor would retaliate in some superstitious way, the stronger actor would still act and be aggressive against sure. any type of weaker actor it is. And thus, sure. by doing this, by retaliating in this way, we will only be fueling the stronger actor, the aliens, of continuing on their quest, sure. moving around the earth, promoting aggressive colonialism. So that will be only for the bad. Now, in the oh, end, sorry. they said that some types of life are stronger than others, and therefore we need to go against this. And they talked about inequality be between races in our world. And I completely agree. Racism between races is very bad. But there's no human being that thinks of him as a species, where, or, or because he is on top of the food chain. There is no human being that thinks of, of, of himself as being wrong on top of the food chain. Some people are vegetarians, some people are vegans, but we still have and take our spot at the top of the food chain because we see that it is justified. So when there comes another species, an alien, that is higher than us in the food chain, why are we to be so hypocritic about our place in existence and about our moral stance and stage in the food chain and suddenly think that it is unjustified for them to come over? No, I say that the example they bring with the Incas is not reasonable and is not related to this type of analysis sure. because this is interspecies, not racism we are talking about. And finally they talked about how we're evolving our morality and we're helping the human race but like I already talked about, you're only swiping away all potential of life, all potential of, 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 sure. of existence if you were well, and you're not protecting the dignity of anyone, not even those with potential for life. Sir, don't you see that the dilemma that we're facing in this debate is preconditioned on this master-slave world order? If we get rid of this world order, such dilemma will never appear again. Okay, so there's this master race of aliens that walks into our Earth and is capable to basically get rid of the entire human race. Now you think that by pressing a button and using nuclear power or whatever other means and wiping this type of aliens from our surface will wipe its domination throughout the entire universe? No, I say no. If they have the means to travel through the universe so fastly, if they have the means to get rid of the human race so well that it is not able to retaliate it in any other way than in such a superstitious way, no thank you. I say you won't get rid of this dominating race. The only thing you will do will aggress him even more. Because now you will feel like he's lost a weak point and now he will want to establish his point again. He wants to establish that he is the dominator and he will be doing this by being sure. more aggressive sure. all around the universe. No, thank you. So let's look at how this debate evolved and why my, 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 my side won specifically. Now, we started off with opening government about this retaliation, eye for an eye is okay and is justified, and about the moral responsibility that if a race has killed other people around you, that you can now kill them. Kill them. But, I, but already from opening office, we talked about how this is immoral and irrational, and it is very angry. It is very irrational decision and emotionally wrong decision to make when you're angry. And also that there is hope in waiting. But I took this a step further and talked about what is morally and ethically unjustified for the individual itself, and how he himself, or Jane herself, is wiping away all potential for all life. She's being a hypocrite and she's being morally wrong in the position she's put into. Then. Opening government continuing about how life can restart. But I gave you clear analysis how it is not justified for us to pull back the time of the Earth 4.5 billion years back when there is still existing potential for life and when life can still be evolved. And then opening opposition came up and talked about the inefficiency that the Earth will be remedied by people on it. But I took this yet again a step further by talking about how pressing this button will actually have negative repercussions in the universe as a whole and will want this dominator to establish his point more aggressively. So as a whole, we beg you, not not to press the button, because that will be worse for the Earth as a whole. Okay, so this is a good round.
So shake hands and get the results later. Whoa! Mazel So good. <laughs> <laughs> the plot twist is the button doesn't connect to anything. Oh! Okay. It's just the test. Awesome. The motion is unfair. Awesome. Huh? Yep. The motion assumes that it is. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, Jesus. I don't know, man. That's a close round, right? Yeah, it's close yeah, round. It uh, I, think, I think we're announcing it at the... We're probably going to a bar slash club, yeah. so you probably get the announcement there like in a few hours. So you don't even know what time it is. I have no idea, I'm sorry. Great round, though. Yeah, it was awesome. It was fun. Yeah, it was it was intense. It was fun. No, it's not. It's, no, it's, it's not. I think it's on. It's too on, isn't it? Uh, no, I think it's off because otherwise the you know red dot would be. Oh, but it's red here. No, it says that. It, what is it actually recording? I can sure. It's fine. Like, do you can you read that? Yeah. It says this function is not well, not available right now. Hold on, let's just try this. Oh, fuck it. Okay, so... Maybe we could just shut it off? Yeah. How the fuck do I shut this off?